Hey statisticians, we just had a quick video where we were looking at how levels levels and significance and level of confidence are supposed to be uh, connected. And in that ex uh, in that video, we were talking about how one minus the level of significance should be the same as a level of confidence, so long as that was a two-tail test. And that we should in fact get uh, equivalent results from a confidence interval and a two-tailed test where the level of significance is one minus the level of confidence or vice versa. And then I immediately gave you an example that showed that uh, that's not always the case. It didn't actually work out. And so um, I thought I would just give you a quick example where it does work out. Um, the fundamental reason it didn't work out in that um in that example, uh, or not not quite non example, was because in there we had a standard error of p hat, right, versus the standard deviation of p based on our null hypothesis. And in fact, these two values ended up being different numbers, which meant our calculations had our, our distributions had different amounts of spread. But let's look at a situation where our distributions would have exactly the same amount of spread, and therefore those confidence intervals and the significance test should be should be the same thing. So let's say we had uh, a situation where we were trying to do some test about mu, and let's say the null hypothesis that mu was 100, and then um, the alternative hypothesis was that mu was not equal to 100. Um, then we said, okay, um, let's say we collected some data, and uh, we found a sample mean that was, uh, say, uh, say 80, um, and let's say that we, let's say we knew the population standard deviation here, and let's say we knew the population standard deviation was something relatively large, like 30, um, and our sample mean was based on. Let's make sure it's based on at least 30 things, so that the central limit theorem will give us normality of our distributions. Let's make it say um, 38 or whatever, right? And so let's see how these two results should be uh, consistent. All right. So if I did a um, if I was creating a confidence interval, then my confidence interval would be x bar plus or minus uh, z squared for some level of confidence times uh, the standard deviation of the population divided by root n. Now, let's say we did a level of confidence that was, say, 95%, right? Okay, well, I got some sun glare coming in here. I'm going to have to move the camera over just a little bit and see if I can avoid that messing up my color. Um, it's getting later in the day. All right, so if I was to make this confidence interval, I'll just do it quickly on the calculator. I'll go over here to uh, a, a Z interval because I knew the population standard deviation. Uh, there's my stats. Um, let's do the population standard deviation we said was 30. Said the sample mean was 80. We said our, our sample size was 38. And we said we do 95% confidence. Boom, we got a confidence interval that goes from 70.46 2 to 89.538. And here, this absolutely is significant evidence that would cause us to reject the hypothesis because 100 is nowhere near uh, this interval we would reject, right? That's in terms of a 95% confidence interval. Well, let's see, what if we did uh, calculate a p-value? We'll calculate a p-value. Um, the associated level of significance ought to be alpha equals uh, point. 05, right? And um, this will be a two-tailed test. So to calculate our p-value, we want to know the probability that uh, we'll get an x-bar that's uh, uh, either, well, uh, remember we got to change this to z-scores. Let's, let's first find the z-score. The z-score for this particular x-bar will do 80 minus uh, uh, our hypothesis of 100 divided by um, uh, the, the standard deviation. The standard deviation in this case would be, uh, where do we have it? That's right, it was 30 divided by the square root of 38. And so I'll do 80 minus 100, there we go, divided by uh, 30 divided by the square root of 38. And we got that, and we got, holy moly, that was a uh, significant z-score, negative 4.10, uh, well, actually, it comes out to 1, 0, all this crazy rounding again, right? There's that sun glare again. Oh, I got to escape the sun. Um, and so, all right, what, what, what does this mean for us? Well, if I was to calculate a p-value then, my p-value would be, uh, let's get another marker, the, the probability of getting a z less than negative uh, 4.11, uh, union with the probability that a z would be greater than 4.11, right? And um, so I could get that on my calculator. I could go to normal CDF, and I could say, let's since R we had a negative z score, I'll focus on that. I'll do negative 4.11, uh, 0, 0, 1, paste, calculate. Whoa, 
that's a tiny probability. I do have to double it to get the two sides of the distribution. And I got a probability of about 0 0.000003 nine, five, eight, et cetera. Now that is a tiny little bitty bitty p value. That would certainly cause us to reject the null hypothesis, just like we rejected the null hypothesis here. Um, it might be more interesting to look at more of a borderline case, but we'll definitely find that uh, in this situation, we didn't have any issues. And the key reason that we had no issues is because both of them were based on this constant amount of variation. That in either case, when we were creating our confidence interval, and we were thinking about how much variation was in our population, um, or excuse me, when, how much variation we needed to consider compared to our sample mean. Well, it was based on sigma, which was a constant value, right? Here, when we created, uh, when we made our z-score, it was based on the same standard deviation formula because we knew the population standard deviation. And so long as the, the, the amount of variation that we use when making our margin of error is the same as the amount of variation that we're making when we calculate our test statistic or our z-score here, then uh, we will always have consistent results between our um, uh, confidence interval and our significance test. However, in the situations where some of these are going to be based on standard errors uh, for confidence intervals versus maybe potentially a different standard error when we're doing a significance test, especially when we solve proportions, that's when we start to see inconsistencies. So my friends, I hope this was a helpful video and put some more stuff in context to you. Um, have a beautiful day, and uh, we'll dig into more deeper conceptual stuff with levels of significance very soon. Uh, peace. Giddy up.